Good day to you my fellow Indo Skeletons and welcome back to the channel. We have got yet another Quasar System ship shop tour for you today and in this hangar sized room we have this ginormous space sub which looks pretty damn cool and I think you can guess who's made this one. And also in this room just squeezed in the side here is a small helicopter. So we're gonna start with the small helicopter and then investigate this monstrosity of a ship. So let's jump our way over to the board, let's turn this off, and this is the Harpy. The Harpy is an anti-infantry ship that comes equipped with four fixed auto cannons as well as laser and plasma cannons. The ship has an auto targeting system, two medium propellant tanks, one fuel chamber, two generators and a good amount of batteries and a GCM plating. Not only is this ship ready for space, this ship is also ready for the moon. The Harpy has a visual surface alignment system, many maneuver thrusters on this ship's bottom and landing gear made of onanum. Last but not least, the most important feature, the rotor move. That sounds pretty damn cool. And we're looking at about 423,000 for the build cost for this. Now in terms of ores we've got quite a few rare ores in here with uh, Corazium just a tiny amount there, Arcanium quite a few stacks there, Onanum is not even found in the belt anymore I believe this was moved to the moon and Zalium is also a quite a rare ore as well as Cutonium. So quite a few, 90.2 stacks in total, but let's check this bad boy out, this is looking pretty cool. Who would have thought you can build a helicopter with working rotors in Starbase? That is absolutely mental. And I'm loving the colour scheme on here, kind of got the same vibe as the police car that we saw in the first episode. Now with the uh, thrusters here. These are taken off one of the dev ships and these are going to be basic tier 1, sadly they've still got this green stripe on, but yeah that should be blue to indicate this is tier 1. We don't know if these red thrusters are staying and up oh, yeah it even says police on the side there as well. At the back of the tail you can see one of the uh, landing wheels there, some lights, another couple of rotors at the back as well as more thrusters. Jumping right into the weapons loadout here, you can see you've got the auto cannons loaded up on the small wings either side of the helicopter. That's going to be spewing out a lot, a lot of damage. And then at the front here, a single laser and a single plasma cannon. So very nice to see here is the ammo itself is shrouded and so this protects it from at least a stray shot or two. Underneath here we look like we have some sort of bay, this could be the way to get in. There we go, let's have a little look see. And there we go, you've got the generator straight behind. And there should be a button to close this door somewhere. There we go, loving the manual style buttons, that's pretty cool. All your controls are laid out on the floor here, letting you just jump straight into the seat and have a relatively small cockpit layout. Now I didn't see an instruction manual in this, so who knows what some of these small buttons are for. Uh, you can turn some of these off. So we got the one for lights there, and that's easy enough to tell. Not sure what that blue one does. Uh, is there a button specifically for the rotor. Don't see one. Combat turret, fire, suppress. Okay, suppress the fire. That's the laser and plasma. Search. Not sure what search is for. Nothing's rotating yet. If we press forward. No, nothing. I'm guessing that only turns when the ship can move. But what else have we got here? We've got Made by Cody right there in the middle. We've got AC heat for the weapons. We've got uh, R1, 2, 3, and 4. Not sure what those are for, but uh, if we had a manual Cody, we'd be able to find out. And you've got heat for the laser and plasma cannons too. We've got distance, so that'll be for the rangefinder. You can see coming off the front there, so it's measuring the distance to the wall. Uh, we've got unit rate limit, that's for the generators. 
the batteries are pretty low because we fired the weapons and we've also got gas fuel and the ammo counters for all of those so that's pretty damn good oh we've got some more buttons up here our oh, rotors and landing there we go let's have a look at that from the outside that's gonna be cool just about didn't see that button there oh it's getting faster and faster that's crazy made out of super lightweight plate uh, floor plate material so that way it's light enough to stay on here without too much beam support now let's see what happens if we get hit by this oh it just it just stops I can't chop the head off with that unfortunately but that should start getting faster and faster again but that's really cool and then of course the back ones are spinning as well tiny little mini rotors these are looking just so damn cool. So yeah, this will be a fully working ship. It can work on the moon. It's got rangefinders there to the ground, keep it level if need be. Landing will come onto these legs so you won't hit any of the weapons or anything hanging off the bottom. It's a really fun little design. I don't know how well it holds up in combat. You'll have to message Cody himself because I'm sure he's tried it. But yeah, definitely a very cool theme ship here. And so yeah, if you want to add this to your police cruiser uh, loadout, then for sure come and grab it over here. Now, we've got this humongous damn submarine. Which is insane, the fact that Cody has built this. It's just so huge a ship. It's, it's nearly not... It's, well, it's nearly too big to fit in this showroom that's how big this thing is and we can see at the back here we have a plasma which seems to be painted black so we can't hardly see it but there is a plasma there very cool gives it loads and loads of thrust and we've got additional thrusters there from the triangle thruster loadout we've also got thrusters at the back here pointing up and probably mirrored on the other side yeah pointing down as well this helps give this sub a little bit of maneuverability since it's so damn huge. On the bottom here we have a quad auto cannon manned turret. We've got a seat there in the middle along with like a quick little aiming reticule and there's probably a fire button. No, it'll be a dev turret most likely. Uh, so that is just fireable by default. So again, this is not like meant to be a, a super serious ship or meta ship. As you can see, we've got holes like, in multiple places through this ship where you can just come in and shoot the innards. But care has been taken to armor up some of the inside as well. So on the front here, another cool aspect. Since it is a submarine, it's going to need torpedoes. And here we have two torpedo tubes ready to go. And there is the same on the other side. On the front here we have the ship's only stopping power of four thrusters which uh, unfortunately <laughs> if someone shoots you from the front they could hit these batteries and these batteries could explode. There's a good couple of those lining down the front and we've got some cargo crates in here as well probably to keep a little bit of ore in for repair situations. So that's pretty damn cool. Now one thing I'd like to note is this ship is yet another ship with some annoying sounds, as I like to call them anyway. This is one of the noisiest ship shops I've ever been in. But let me just turn on the default sounds that this ship is emitting just temporarily. I won't leave them on because it will get old very quickly. But wait there a sec. There we go. So we've got this kind of sonar ping that comes out from the ship. And I think this was specifically added because Cody had built so many of these like submarines and ships that he kind of asked for like a sonar ping which kind of fits so you could like tie it into like a radar system or whatever um, but yeah it's super cool and it's it's amazing the devs added this in and it really just makes this ship really cool but the ongoing pinging will drive you mad so I'm going to turn it off we've seen Cody is just somewhat of a manacle person when it comes to driving people mad with sounds on top we've got yet another quad auto cannon turret and we've got maneuver thrusters in the top there as well. We've got a bit of a pilot seat set up here in the top tower of the submarine and 
A couple of holes. Deadly rail cannon turret on the top there. And then we've got these crazy things here. Sticking out the top like an aerial kind of thing. This is just extended out from the ship. Looks really, really cool. Uh, we've got just hidden underneath there. We've got some receivers. So this thing's probably got ISAN as well. In the back here, we've got hatch. So let's work our way in the ship. Immediately greeted by very colourful blue and red lights, which gives a very cool purple colour. We've got windows coming out here, which is also really cool. Really like the fact that it's all like fully enclosed. We've got another door at the back there, and then we've got a ladder which comes up here to this flight cockpit area. So let's jump in here and see what we've got. Had a pretty good field of view, obviously lacking somewhat below, but we have got some rangefinders coming off the front there as well. On the side here, we've just got the deck gun charge and stuff for the fuel and stern gas and bow gas. Now, this is something cool that, that Cody has done with this ship. He's got separate propellant tanks for the front and rear portions of the ship. And I think he's actually included a way to combine the two to refuel should you have an issue there. Now, turning that off, this is a little bit further away than I would like in terms of being able to quickly view or read any of these things. That should definitely be brought a bit closer. Does this chair move at all? I notice we've got a rail in here for something. I think that might be just done to bridge power. I don't think this seat can move. That's a shame. I'm going to stand up for this because it'll be easier. So we've got <laughs> speed in knots. We've got the ice and coordinates as well as orientation and destination. We've got whether the boat is submerged or not. On this side, we've got bow, stern, and starboard. This is most likely rangefinders, possibly. We've got a turn key here. Doesn't seem to do anything, sadly. We've got surface. I don't know what difference this does to the ship. Gonna have to get Cody in here one of these days to explain all these damn things. We've got something... Silent... Silent motor, maybe? Let's go here, and we'll read the data off of here. This will be easier. Silent motor. I think that maybe just shuts off the plasma, maybe? Uh, so it doesn't make it so obvious that the ship is coming past. We've got submerge, we've got guide, IFF, that's just going to be your transponder signal, as well as fire, which doesn't want to fire for some reason. Maybe there's just not enough power yet. Uh, charge limiting, there we go. Deck gun charges up right there and bam! Shoots the ball right in front. Uh, we've got gun centering, so I'm guessing that just resets the gun to the center as well as an alarm, which won't sound because I've turned the sounds off. So let's go explore the rest of the ship. So we had another thing in here, what have we got here? This says remove this duct and this tech panel, leave big orange button. Don't know why you'd want to remove the duct. What else have we got here? In case you manage to lock yourself out, press this button. This is only in the ship shop version. Remove once this has been purchased. Huh, interesting. Maybe there's some issues with the uh, the ship shop thing in purpose there. Ah, we've got a little hinge doohickey here. And it looks like this is to connect some circuits up that wouldn't be connected otherwise possibly to give this hinge some power. Yeah, there we go. Let's turn the light on. Everything's painted black in here and if it's not painted black, having the light on ruins it. But yeah, we've got the connected hinge here, so I'm guessing you would hit that button and then that would close the circuit. No? Interesting. Don't know how that circuit would close then, but we can close that one manually by the looks of it. Oof. And then Maybe now it works. There we go. And then we've got a glowing orange button. There you go. But yeah, you can totally turn off that. And if you wanted to as well, to make sure no one can get in, 
you could actually take that handle off. Meaning that you could only get into this ship if someone lets you in. And that's pretty cool. But let's venture further down. We've got some more controls. Three different sirens that can come out of this. Uh, that would be pretty noisy if they were all on. Oof, all these use of rails. All these rails are going temporarily soon, so this might break this ship. So let's go forwards first. At least what I think is forwards. We've got a little staircase here. Let me land, actually. Totally walkable. That's really cool. Uh, and then that actually goes further back. So I think we have to go down and round to get into this area. Or can we crouch? Can we crouch to get in? No, I think we have to go down and round. So through here we've got a glass panel there to one of the generators. Uh, this doesn't look like it's got a core in though. So maybe that's like a backup generator maybe. By the looks of it here we've got all the pieces to make torpedoes just slapped on the side here, bolted in. So that's really cool. And we've got in here these are the different torpedo tubes and we've got I think these just act as storage yeah so when you've made your torpedoes up you can store them in here ready to be oops falling down there we go ready to be put into the main torpedo tubes themselves and then they can be fired out of the ship which is really cool loving the color lighting here and we've got oh what we got here we've got a whole bunch of stuff on the side oh my god so this must be all the fire control chips that you would just chuck in the torpedoes. Are they all the same? They are. There's loads of these all stacked up. So you've got to be careful when you pull this off because you, you unbolt that and that and you'll get four chips floating around. So I wouldn't do that while you're moving at least. But yeah, I'm guessing these will be for the guidance system. If we have a little look. Target thrust. Yeah, by the looks of it, it's just... Uh, specifically for the torpedoes and I'm guessing if we just check these yeah these are probably preloaded with the correct fields no oh I can't see any data information on these yeah these look like they're the, the chip slots yeah so why would you need just the chip slots in here I'm pretty sure these had data fields on them, but uh, I guess not. So we'll go further back down here. Everything's labelled. Armoury, munitions, no pips. Can we open this up? There we go. So we have railgun parts here, as well as normal gun parts, ammo for all the weapons, which is really cool. Yes, very nice. Very, very nice. All pre-coloured as well to match the ship. Come on, close. Thank you. In the next room we have the reactor room. So in here, oh, just squeeze in. So we've got some spare rods in here, which is pretty good. Uh, and there's also a further run down the side of the ship, which is actually pretty cool. Where we've got even more spares for coolant by the looks of it, and for rods themselves as well as another generator here. So jumping back into here, this looks like the main generator, uh, which is pretty big and there's actually another door to get to the other side of this. Tons of coolant and tons of spares. That's really cool. Let's jump further down the ship. This should be again reactor room. So you've got a little bit more on this side. This is where all the connections come in. So if anything gets disconnected, you can kind of reconnect just a little bit here. So that's pretty cool. So let's jump out and go further forwards. Well, further, further back, I think. Yeah, we're going back down. <laughs> uh, here we've got, we're right at the back of the ship here. So this is the backside of the plasma thruster. And above us, we can see fuel tanks. Now these are single support fuel tanks so you've got to be careful because stuff can fall off these pretty easily we've got a control panel here for the radiation rates and and whatnot for the generator so how much coolant you're using as well as some controls on off buttons that sort of stuff 
but again there's no real there's nothing's labeled so we've got like five buttons here no idea what these do uh, without having to dig through the ship and check the names and check everything else so definitely some work here needed to make it a bit more obvious on what all of this is for at the back here we can also see squeezed in the tail of the submarine is yet more crates so hopefully plenty of storage here so that you can store in tons of spare ore for repairs a bit later uh, now at the back here we've also got these resource bridges I believe if you attach one from here to one right at the front of the ship you can refuel the front fuel tanks which is actually pretty cool now there's a what looks like passenger compartment there I haven't seen any stairs to go up there uh, unless it was this side oh maybe we just jump up here nope not the correct route let's see if we can find another way didn't see any holes in the ceiling anywhere was there a door that I missed ah of course even more of the ship so we've got multiple levels on the ship as well which is pretty cool so this is the operations YOLO and MFCUs so yeah tons of stuff right here easy to access as well as uh, the same stuff that we saw downstairs at the back of the ship Again, controls for all the generators and stuff here you've got the main YOLO bank for the ship and this is where all the code that controls all the little little extra bits that has been put in for this uh, which is pretty cool what have we got here oh there we go a little bit about the ship the wolf 2540 is based off two references the Willem Bauer and this strategy is used by the Axis during World War II called the Wolf Pack. Interesting. That reminds me, I should probably read the post for this outside. But we'll continue searching the ship first because this is a lot more fun. Well, would you look at that? That looks cool. So, the only room in this sub that isn't blue and red lighting is a control room. We've got like a control table here, which is really cool. This is where you'd like kind of plot all of your operations and where the ships are and sea and stuff like that. Obviously not in Starbase because, well, <laughs> we haven't got anything small enough. As you can see here, we've got a replica of a coffee cup, uh, similar to what we saw in the other ships, but yeah, you wouldn't be able to make tiny little figures to put on here, sadly. Uh, the pig also shows up here as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, in here we've got several seats, so this area shows all the different uh, controls. So this will be like a live control readout on which thrusters are being used. Uh, if I jump into this seat, we've got again here we've got uh, like the silent running, surface, submarine, uh, submerge and the limiter, uh, as well as a bunch of buttons, who knows what they do. and. Uh, the standard fuel gas and all that stuff is also listed here as well which is pretty cool over in this corner one we've got yet yeah, another coffee cup which is awesome uh, unit limit rates radiation rates so this is all generator stuff again as well as uh, readout for the battery and yeah who knows what all this is for that's possibly setting a battery limit that you want to maintain and we've got another door which leads us further down here this is the respawn bay so we've got a reconstruction machine which can hold up to 30 spare bodies per machine and once you've come here you can hit link and if you die you can respawn here there is a timer as well and it has to recharge between each respawn and as well as we've got a meeting room back here as well which is super cool and again back to the blue and red lighting and we're again at the back of the ship so there we go that is really cool now I just need to find a quick way out of here, which I believe is straight up here. There we go. We've escaped. Really cool ship. So much detail on the inside of this thing. Uh, really, really like all the work that's gone into this. It's just it's such a lot of design. It's ridiculous. Making all that work, making it all fit, especially the submarine hatch doors, making it so you can actually fit in this ship and fit through the doors is so much work and so many little features I just wish it had a manual to explain 
everything about it. But we can finish off with its description. The Wolf 2540-4. I'll just turn that off as well. Introducing the upgraded version of the Wolf. This version features dev turrets, a reconstruction machine for when the Wolf is under fire, and the newly added silent motor, allowing the Wolf to lurk and strike at the darkest hour. It also comes with a command center from where you can pilot the sub in case of emergency or push the big red button. Lastly, the ship also has the plasma thruster, which allows for up to a speed of 150 knots, which we all know actually means meters per second. But keeping it in theme there, liking that. Now make contact, lead your target, and score a kill in the dark. Very, very cool. Very expensive though. Just the construction cost is over 2 million and the sheer amount of stacks this needs 511 stacks of ore total using like all that we has only just been added to the game 23 stacks of that that's just nuts i don't even know where to find this no one's ever seen it we've got zallium that's pretty rare uh targium is a brand new one as well uh, Onanum is no longer in the belt. It needs 51 stacks of that. Very strong armor. Cutonium, Lucium. There's just so much stuff in here. This is not going to be easy to build without a voucher. But I think this was mostly built A for the fun and B for the events. As a practical ship during early access, do not buy this ship. <laughs> not unless you're serious, serious role players. But it's a very, very cool ship nonetheless, and has been excellent to visit and come walk through. But that is it for this room with this ship shop, and we'll be back with another room in good time. Until then, Kenator out. <laughs>